Street apologist. Street apologist. Street apologist. Street apologist. Street apologist. On the radio. Recently, Charles Dow Straightway appeared on Jason Whitlock's Fearless program. And today, we are going to do a review of that. So let's get started right away here on Street Apologist Live with your host, Vocab Malone. Thursday, December 15th, 10 till 2, had a few internet challenges that's why we started late apologize as i don't control let's start right away now with this first clip and we're going to be watching a lot of clips today and in these clips you're going to uh see uh, some video from gentlemen from straightway which is a hebrew israelite group of the pentecostal variety actually and we're going to interact we're going to respond because this is big news you know jason whitlock used to be with espn used to be with fox sports and now he's doing his thing on on social media and he's got quite a team behind him some brothers i even know let's interact with this content and find out what's going on because this is part of the big news cycle now it's crazy ain't it this is a show where we serve the underserved and look into the overlooked first clip in the defensive player of the year, Super Bowl champion uh, with Tony Dungy and, and Peyton Manning and all that. Robert Mathis reached out to me and was like, hey, man, <clears throat> that stuff Bishop Nathaniel was talking, that doesn't jive with what he believes and what he knows to be uh, the real Israelite movement. He reached out to me over Instagram, and I was like, well, hey, man, you know, love to hear uh, what you have to say in reaction uh, to Bishop Nathaniel. And he goes, I'll do you one better. Uh, I'll get my pastor and uh, some of my former NFL peers to come to the studio, and we'd love to talk about it. And so that's what we're going to do today. Robert Mathis is here. Uh, so is Kabir. Ba Kabir, say your last name for me. Bajabi Amila. Kabir Bajabi <laughs> Bia Amila is here as well. KGB, uh, he's in the Green Bay Packers <laughs> ring of honor, was one of the best pass rushers for Green Bay uh, for a number of years. Uh, and their pastor, Pastor Charles Dow from Straightway uh, Ministries right here in Tennessee, in Lafayette, Tennessee, about an hour outside of Nashville. Many of you, uh, some of you may remember that KGB and Pastor Dow. All right, so that's the introduction. So how did this all happen? Well, after Kyrie Irving, NBA star with the Brooklyn Nets, tweeted out a video uh, link to Hebrews to Negroes by Ron Dalton Jr. on Amazon. Uh, a bunch of stuff came up because people started looking into this documentary film, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And they said, you know, um, the quotes Hitler in here, it's a fake quote. Uh, it's got Holocaust denial or minimization, I guess we could say at least. Um, it seems a little anti Semitic. It's filled with some. False facts and fraudulent history. There's some problems here, not just on the factual, but uh, on the, let's call it, moral level. Okay. And so then IUIC, no affiliation with Ron Dalton Jr., other than they both claim to be Israelites, um, did a small uh, kind of protest, is what the, the news was calling it, one day. And then a few games later, a quite big one of maybe a couple hundred guys, uh, some estimates put it up into the thousand. I think it's much closer to a couple hundred. And then after that, Jason Whitlock saw it, said, you know, uh, those guys just seem to be doing some okay stuff. Let me talk to them. And so he got a hold of Bishop Nathaniel, the leader of IUIC, that's Israel United in Christ, it's a one West Hebrews like group, interviewed him, and there's some interesting stuff that came out. We did a little bit of review of that on BK Apologist channel. I definitely encourage you to check that out. And then what happened next was, as you just heard, Robert Mathis, a former NFL star with the Indianapolis Colts, said, there's some troubling things in here. Let me give you the real scoop on what Hebrew Israelism really is. Now, obviously, he's not going to use the phrase Hebrew Israelism, but what this thing really is, right? And so Whitlock, he's a big uh, believer in uh, free speech, which I agree with him on that. I said, okay, let's have you on. And um, so now I'm going to to go ahead and look at this with you, a number of the clips that I've drawn out, and we're going to add some brief commentary for greater understanding, a perfect example of apologetics, 
live in action type thing. A shout out to Jay Fry for the super chat. Thank you very much. Appreciate that very much. You get the sound effects. And uh, keep it up with the super chats because it helps keep this thing going. Shout out to Carmen, a 2 d 2 best mods out here. So we got a number of people watching. Please like this video. Please share this link. Please invite people on in. And please drop us a comment to let us know you're here. I greatly appreciate that. Moving on to the second clip. We're going to take these in order. Here we go. You may remember that KGB and Pastor Dow were uh, written about in a Sports Illustrated article in 2020. Now, KGB is 45 years old. He's been out of the NFL for quite some time. But in 2020, Sports Illustrated decided to write a story about KGB that uh, painted a very unflattering picture of Straightway Ministries and Pastor Charles Dow. Uh, they basically uh, accused KGB of being in a cult. And so uh, anyway, Robert Mathis reaches out to me. I reach back out to Robert and voila, and we got a couple other, Daniel Mir that played for the Colts and was a teammate of Robert Mathis. He's here, he'll join us later. TJ Clemens, Clemens uh, who was an offensive tackle for the Minnesota Vikings, is a member of Straightway Ministries. Uh, these guys feel like they know what a true Israelite is and it's not what Bishop Nathaniel uh, described. And so Robert, I'm, I'm, because you reached out, I'm gonna start with you first. Shout out to Doki Doki for gifting memberships. Appreciate that as well. That helps the channel. We'll get more channel members up in here. So you just heard Whitlock uh, talk about the Sports Illustrated article that came out. And uh, it, it, I'm putting it on the screen so you can see it. Pray for Kabir, Chapter 2, The Past of the Cult and the Troubled Past, July 15, 2020. Kaylin Kaler, I did talk to Kaylin Kaler, or I guess I could say she talked to me. Uh, she got a hold of me for this article. I wasn't a main person. I was just another voice in it. So I'm not trying to over, you know, do it. But uh, they created these illustrations. There's Kabir, whom I do have a relationship with, and I appreciate and respect him. Obviously, we have strong disagreements here. And uh, there's some illustrations. There's Dow. They're doing the practice shooting. It almost looks like the cover for a comic book, right? I mean, it's not horrible. And you got, you know, the polygyny, polygamy represented there. And uh, you can see it's three parts. This was not just a little piece that Sports Illustrated did. There's this, the school play, the minister defense, and the fall of a hero. Very interesting stuff. They actually did a pretty good job on this. Chapter three, the followers, courtroom drama, and the next chapter. And, uh, you know, go down here and uh, you see a screen capture there from Charles Dow's YouTube. And go down a little bit further and you see vocab alone, the pen name of a Christian author and critic and an expert on Hebrew Islamism who publishes educational videos on religions to a popular YouTube channel explains it this way. These guys aren't going to bother anyone. They just want to be in there on their I didn't say on. I must have said in, but they have it. You know, minor mistake. They just want to be on. But. In. They just want to be in their compound and be left alone. I guess on, because if you're on the property. Anyways, <laughs> you get the idea, right? But I wouldn't want to be the federal agency that goes in there to take away their guns. It could be a Branch Davidian disaster all over again. Now, that is something I said, uh, but I want to make sure it's interpreted the right way. That's my criticism of the government. The government, okay? Um, I have plenty of criticism for Dow and Straightway Ministry, as they call it. But that particular thing was more along the lines of criticizing the overreach of our government that you saw happen at Waco. I've done an entire show on that. Maybe somebody can drop the link for that. Hey, Andrea, how you doing? Good to see you as well. And uh, we'll, we'll find out about that. But nonetheless, there's that. So that's what he's talking about. Now, let's move on to this next clip from Jason Whitlock. So he's a conservative and really came to light during uh, Trump's time, you know, and he had all these hot takes that made him quite controversial, but really skyrocketed his popularity on social media. And so he's interviewing these guys. It's a little bit outside of his lane, but it's interesting. And here's a 35 second clip. Let's look at what is said here by Robert Mathis, former f player for the Indianapolis Colts, as he actually has some criticism for Nathaniel of IUIC's version of the gospel. Listen to this. Very what did you hear from Bishop Nathaniel that upset you? Uh, divisiveness, because as an Israelite man, we're supposed to spread the message, the gospel. And a lot of what he was saying didn't jive because 
it pushes people away from the, from, from, from the true and living y'all. He wants to bring his people in. All those that have an ear to hear, and how can you hear if you're spewing, okay, the white man is this, the white man is that, uh, kiss my boots and <clears throat> things like that. But all the divisiveness, it, it just wasn't, it just wasn't conducive to what Yah says in his book. Pastor Dow, did you? Okay, so let me talk to you about a few differences among uh, straightway. Straightway is closer to the Hebrew roots type of Hebrew Israelite, and that they do not say Yahweh Shai or Yahweh. They tend to say, as you just heard, Robert, Robert Mathis, Yah. They tend to say Yah. And, uh, you know, it's closer to uh, what the truth would be because the divine name of Exodus 3.14 and the scriptures in general uh, is understood as Yahweh, or some people make a case for Yahweh. Uh, but I think Yahweh is, is, is probably the right way, uh, right? And um, that's not really a massive issue in the first place, but it just points out some of the differences between Hebrew Israelite groups. This is a Hebrew Israelite group, straightway truth ministry, but it's a very different type of Hebrew Israelite group, and we should recognize that. And we would applaud Robert Mathis's criticism, not just because it's criticism, but because we would say that part is correct, right? What did he say there? He said, I heard Nathaniel's message. I heard divisiveness, divisiveness. He's not wrong. He's clearly not wrong about that. You heard that? Right? So, you know, it's interesting. Uh, one Westers, if you talk to them out on the street, they'll try to pit us against them, and they, they, they shade it in all kinds of ways. You know, we don't like the Bible. We're just trying to include ourselves in here. Um, if you're uh, black, it's because, you know, you've got to do this for Massa, right? That's what they type, they say. Whatever the case is, if you're Hispanic, they'll call you Puerto Rican, Mexican. This is what they say, right? But notice, even amongst fellow Hebrew Israelites, people that say, I'm an Israelite according to Deuteronomy 28 and the scriptures. I'm trying to keep this law. Israel is the top of the food chain, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whatever, right? They still recognize when you put the old covenant and the new covenant together that it's clear that the Abrahamic promise and covenant was never intended as just Israel's special little possession for her to hold on to, and that's all it was for. These promises to Abraham and to the patriarchs, you talk about uh, all the folks that God made promises to, don't forget about David, are filtered to and through Christ. They're ultimately about him. He's a center of it. Then filtered back out to the world, and that's why the Great Commission comes into play. Now, the unfortunate part with what Mathis would be saying here, ladies and gentlemen, is the message that he wants for all people is one of gospel alchemy, meaning trying to blend human works and righteousness with the pure untampered, unfiltered, raw grace of God. And you'll see that later on. But we got to start somewhere. And so we're not all criticizing. We're not all criticizing. Robert Mathis seems very sincere. And I am glad that he gave a different face to Hebrew Israelism. Because I want people to know the truth and what's really going on. Hmm, where is the fourth clip I had? Where, oh, where did it go? Um, I might have to circle back around. I cannot find my fourth clip, but that's okay. I got my fifth clip. Oh, I just found it. Okay, here's what Pastor Dow, as he calls himself, says in this 22-second clip. Here we go. Listen to this next clip. What would make us pretty much different from a lot of these Israelite camps is we actually, we don't discriminate against anyone. And it makes no difference to us what color you are or what non-color you are or whatever you are. If the Messiah has filled you with the Holy Spirit, and he has given you his spirit to be able to keep his commandments and walk in the newness of life, uh, then you are brothers and you are sisters. So, Justin, I, I think... Huh. I have said it many times, out of all the Hebrews like groups, Straightway Truth Ministries seems to be the least bigoted. So we can have criticism for a false religion without calling them names that they're not. We can definitely call IUIC bigots. Can we call Dow's group and Dow's people bigots? I don't think that's quite as accurate. However, he is painting it a little softer than it is. Now, this clip, I don't, I'm not 100% sure where it is, so it's going to take me a second, but I want to show you something here as well. And what you're going to see here is you still have the ethnic hierarchy in full play. So give me a second for to line this up, okay? To actually, no affiliation with this man whatsoever. 
and to react the way that they do because marriage and don't count people is about women getting murdered mm -hmm. and actually practicing what the we lost the will of the father and the father do i not have it it's past and other brothers but listen what he says these brothers are teaching no nope, that's not it hold on i might have to play it from my phone i do this is important this other thing i do have it and i do need you to hear it okay just give me a second Is that it? Marriage. And the only way they got it was do I can understand he went out. At least there's laws for that. Hmm. Count people. Is uh, when you made that one by one of these. Where'd it go? And actually practice these demonic act like and they lay you no, know, it's not that we're better. Oh, there you go. And they I do have it. Hold on. And actually practice it, what the book says. Okay, I'm just gonna have to play this from my phone. You do need to hear this. Because you deal still hear the ethnic hierarchy right here, okay? Listen to what Charles Dow says about Israelites, okay? Practicing what the book says, all of a sudden these demonically in charge and infused people have issue and trouble, and they act like and they lay and levy charges against us and say, "Well, we think we're better than everybody else." You know, it's not that we're better than everybody else. We're better than everybody else because the book says we're better than everybody else. Yah says that we're better than everybody else. That's why He chose us as a nation. And when he chose us as a nation uh, to make sure that, that we are the ones that is the call of Yah, he made sure that he has washed us with his blood, filled us with his Holy Spirit, and the difference between... Okay. Uh, it's not that we think we're better than anyone else. We are better than everybody else. <laughs> because God said we're better than everybody else, and that's why God chose us. Now, someone look up the passage. I want to keep it moving. So I like to ask the uh, live chat to contribute here. If you could contribute, look up in the Torah, the passage where Yahweh is telling Israel why he didn't choose them. And he says, it's not because you were more numerous than other peoples. And there's a whole list of what he says. Uh, just uh, go with the word um, numerous other peoples and why God chose Israel. If someone could find that and drop that in there. I'd appreciate that, because it's really the opposite. He says, you know, it ain't because you're so much better or anything like that. It's because of my own choice, and that's what we see reflected also all the way going up to the New Testament. It's for the praise of His glory according to His will, according to His purpose, right? It's not because Israel was better, stronger, or more numerous, or anything like that. And yet, you still hear it there. So, you know, they are not as bigoted, but they still say stuff like that. They're still Hebrew Israelites. So we got to keep this straight because, you know, that's when he's talking to Michael Israel, a fellow Hebrew Israelite, and it's a little bit of a softer sell than when he's talking to Jason Dow. But people can get confused sometimes strictly from the way things look and sound. And I'm going to prove that, especially with this next clip. Look at this next clip. This next clip, you're going to see part of the praise and worship service of a straightway truth ministry. Now, I've already been knowing this. I've actually shared clips from their praise and worship service to warn people, look, it can look Christian or sound Christian, but you got to still be aware. So people get thrown off because they're like, oh, yeah. Um, oh, is that right? Uh, I'm going to look up the passage you got there and see if that's right. But here we go. Let's. OK, OK, wait, wait, wait. Before before. Let me, let me put this on the screen first. Thank you, soldier of Christ. I appreciate that. And uh, no disrespect, Franklin Brogan said, that's in the OT and the KJV too. Don't even need a Torah. Uh, Franklin, when I am saying Torah, I just mean the first five books of the Old Testament. That's, what, that's all I'm saying. And I knew it was within the first five books. I forgot exactly where. So you can use the KJV. That's fine. But my point is that it's in the Torah, which is just a different way to describe the first five books. So that's all I meant. So uh, you do need a Torah, basically. Soldier of Christ, so Deuteronomy 7, 7, important verse to remember. The Lord did not set his love on you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any other people, for you were the least of all peoples. Do, do you see this on the screen? Remind people that think they're Israelites of this, regardless of, of if they're Semitic or not. Look at this, and this is the same way it is with the church. It's not because of what we do. you got to be synergistic. Uh, 
it, to, to believe that it's because of how we were. But the Bible's not synergistic in its soteriology or its election. It's monergistic. And we are monergistic over here. I'm Reformed. I got Calvinistic soteriology. I believe all Christians could have something, should have something closer to that. But nonetheless, look at this. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 8. But because the Lord loves you, notice how it's God doing the action, setting his love upon Israel. Why? Because he would keep the oath which he swore to your fathers. The Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand. Notice how it's all about his choice and his work and his doing. Thank you, soldier of Christ, for posting that. Let's remember that, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I want to show you this next clip of the worship service that I was bringing out to you. Because people are going to go, what? And what you need to remember is that diversity is never the mark of orthodoxy. Understand what I'm Praise saying? Praise and worship uh, from Saturday that will give you and the audience a taste of what it looks like at Straightway Ministries. You see that? Um, it's funny. I was watching a clip uh, where GMS, one of the GMS guys, was um, criticizing the recent Dow appearance, right? And, of course, you know, what did they say in their reaction? It actually straight up uh, <laughs> call, calls, him, calls him a false prophet, okay? The GMS is a fellow Hebrews like group with the one best variety, right? And they just straight up say, oh, you know, Pastor Charles Dow, he's a false prophet. Uh, what is it? It's GMS. Um, I forget the name of it right now. I was just watching it. Now, the, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and show you here where to do There we go. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Dow is a false prophet. I know you can't see it. It takes a while. Salutations. Uh, it's literally called Pastor Dow is a False Prophet. Seven days ago, GMS get to the point, and they review it. And uh, the GMS guy watches that part, and he starts laughing. He thinks that is especially funny. Shout out to Kevin's Biblical Discussion. Thank you for your super chat. I appreciate that very much. So do not be fooled by the way things look or sound. Um, it doesn't matter if they praise and worship like what you think happens at a church. I mean, my goodness. I mean, the one that's Pentecostals, uh, they, they they can, you know, have great praise and worship. And by the way, uh, Charles Dow basically does teach oneness theology. What that means is the group is non-Trinitarian. What's that mean? What that means is they are modalist. What that means is that if you go on their website and look under the section under baptism, it says baptism in Jesus' name. I'm reading it here from my phone. It's right there. You can see it. Hold on. Da, 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 da. This is uh, from the Straightway Truth website. Everything always does this. I don't know the trick to do it. And I want to read this particular part to you, okay? You ready? This is from their website. Wow! I can go on with this for hours. So what is the problem? The problem is disobedience. It has always been the problem with the people of God. It's sad. The scriptures are clear. They are clear that Jesus is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I would suggest that people should study the scriptures day and night until you believe, yada, 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 yada. And what it does is it's promoting uh, Jesus-only baptism, which is a hallmark of oneness Pentecostalism. Now, um, by a certain metric, then, therefore, Dowell's group should be called oneness Pentecostals. Shout out to Righteous Through Christ for the Super Chat as well. Thank you very much. Shout out also to Be Effective for the Super Chat. I appreciate that. And... Uh, you say, wasn't Straightway Truth Ministries highly influenced by the book, book, Will the Real Heretics Please Stand Up to an Extreme Extent? 
Uh, you know, I don't know the answer to that question. I actually have the book on my shelf over there. In fact, I might go grab it if I if I can do it during this next video. I have never heard that. I do not know, but if you have any information about that, that's that's a I would like to hear that. So let's see how much longer I'll have to this next clip. This is an interesting clip with Kabir. It basically says women are not made in the image of God. Listen to this and tell me what would your argument be against this if you were going to do some apologetics. Here we go. Watch this. Or that. Oh, it was before that. I mean, it really started with the whole image of God. I, I was one time reading, it was in 1 Corinthians 11, it says uh, the image of God was created, uh, the, 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 that man was created the image of God. And, um, and I, was, I, never, I don't know why I didn't notice it before, but for whatever, I believe God just allowed me to see it differently, just really see it. And I remember telling my wife, I said, did you know as a woman, you weren't created as the image of God? And she, it really, it really it got to her. And then, so when, so we were going back, it started in May. So we were going back and forth, kind of trying to figure out this whole image of God. She felt like, no, we're equal. I said, no, it says the head of every man is Christ and the head of every woman is man and the head of Christ is God. We were going back and forth and I was trying to find videos, a pastor that said that. I think Pastor Dow came up there, but I said, Ooh, I can't use that one to sell that to her. I had to find a pastor. So let me ask you this, yeah. KGB. You grew up in our... I'm back. Yeah. Well, I couldn't find it, but I believe it's by, uh, uh, I think it's by David Burkott, the book, Will the Real Heretic Stand Up? Uh, I know I got it because I know it's red. It's a red book, and I've actually read the entire thing. This is a book of his I like better, Dictionary of Early Christian Belief. Reference guide to more than 700 topics discussed by the early church fathers. This book um is helpful and he is the author of will the real heretic stand up please stand up and i know i've got it now i'm now i'm uh irritated by the fact that i can't find it but anyways um i don't know but let me know about that okay so there you just heard kabir say that women are not made in the image of god and so i dealt with this briefly on um smart christian uh channel with Corey. And there's two key passages to show to deal with this, plus something that I guess we might just say is logical. Here we are, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God, that's Elohim there. So Elohim created man in his own image, in the image of Elohim, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now, if you read this through, it's pretty obvious that God here is speaking to the man and the woman. It's pretty obvious that he's telling them to go forth into all the earth. When it says, Be fruitful, and multiply, that is saying, Spread my image all over the earth. And the only reason why that can be done is because both male and female are image bearers. They both mark have the mark of the Imago Dei. And thank you, Nate, for sharing that. I appreciate that, the, the link to the uh, discussion that we had on the Smart Christian channel. Could you also, Nate, go real quick, my man, pretty the, please, uh, and grab uh, the link that I have that is... Um, uh, where just go into to the, the the YouTube channel and put the the the, the phrase um, Imago Dei. If you could put the phrase Imago Dei, because I want people to see that as well. If you could, please. I just pinned that other link. I appreciate you doing that. Okay, so you see here that they're going to be fruitful and multiply. What are they doing with that? They're, they're spreading the image of God everywhere. You see, they're both image bearers. And how would it work if only the man was an image bearer? Um, then wouldn't that mean that when a male and a female produce offspring, that they would only, if the, the, the let's say it's the male who supposedly is the only, only image bearer, wouldn't the male only be half of the image of God? Because, see, it's mother and father's DNA, right? That's what the person is. It's a combination of their DNA. So wouldn't the male only be half and then the female would be none, and then you would get the situation where it would go decreasingly less and less over time. How is it that only one of them bear the image of God? If it's a male 
they have the image of God, but the female doesn't. But what does Genesis 1, 26, 27 say? So God created man in his own image. and the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So it says right there, male and female, he created them. Well, who, what, 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 what? They're both created in the image of God. Now, they'll try to say, oh, no, 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 no. That is just saying that the male is, because it says in the image of God, he created him. Do you see what I'm saying? That's what they'll try to say. Well, let's go and to another verse here in a second. But before we do that, I just want to remind everyone that this is a beautiful verse that shows that this dignity applies to both male and female human beings, and that that is a pretty unique view in the context of the A and E, the ancient Near Eastern context. When you look at Mesopotamia. Uh, you have a situation there where the gods are basically creating humans just to carry out work for them that they want them to do. But Adam can be – it's translated as man here, but Adam can be uh, something that denotes a generic term for both male and female. Now, sometimes it does refer to man as distinct from woman, but other times Adam – when it's not the proper name that way, refers to both male and female as a generic name. And we've used this in our uh, English language for a long time. Not anymore, right? But let me just show you something else that really puts the nail in the coffin to this view, as well as one thing I'm going to ask uh, in relationship to <clears throat> to uh, to uh, uh, this, this claim that only men are made in the image of God. Look at Genesis 5. This is the book of the generations of Adam. So now it's going to show them carrying out being fruitful and multiply, right? When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. So likeness, uh, very similar, you understand, like image of God. Well, look what it says. So it might say, oh, look, that's point for Dow's side if we're taking it that way. But he's already wrong about that because we've already understood how Adam can mean both male and female. And when God created man, he created created him in the likeness of God. Male and female, he created them. And he blessed them and named them man when they were created. Did you hear that? He blessed them and named them man when they were created. It literally says he named them Adam when they were created. So it's not the proper now and not the proper name there. Male and female, he created them. He blessed them and named them Adam when they were created. Do you see that? So what is man in those contexts? It's male and female. And then the text shows that reality. Look at verse 3. When Adam had lived 130 years, he fathered a son in his own likeness. Do you see? Adam's image-bearing quality is passed on to his son, and it's mentioned Seth. He fathered a son in his own likeness after his image and named him Seth. Do you see that? The days of Adam after he fathered Seth were 800 years, and he had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Adam lived were 930 years and died. So it makes the point there with Seth, but that would be the case with all the sons and daughters that he had. You see, it's drawing that out on purpose. I just want to show you how decidedly it, unbiblical it is to try to say that only men are made in the image of God. And listen, I am a complementarian. A complementarian is somebody who is not an egalitarian. It means you do believe in male headship properly done in the home. It means that you believe there is differences and distinctions between male and female. It means that you believe the office of elder is only open to qualified males. That's part of what the position entails. There's differences amongst complementarians as well, but that's a basic essence. So, you know, they'll try to say, oh, these soft evangelicals, da, 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 you know, that dows folks. But, but I'm a complementarian. I'm just reading the Bible for what it is. We don't need to put people in a place lower and try to squash them down, right? What, what is that? The, the Bible's got us uh, in the right place, and we recognize that, but why would we come up with this? This is a doctrine really outside of the history of the, of the, of the Bible, of a Christian interpretation, you know what I mean? And so this is like totally out of left field with these guys. And Adam can mean man as a proper name or a common noun denoting a male individual, or a generic noun denoting male and female human beings. And you can see there that's what it is. So put Genesis 126 and 27 with Genesis 5, 1 and 2, and then you'll see that that is an incorrect interpretation. Not only that, but isn't it the case that Eve was fashioned out of the side of Adam? 
right? We've all read, I believe, Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2. And what does it say there, ladies and gentlemen? It says that Eve is from Adam, right? Woman, out of man. Do you guys remember that? Okay, let me just go there real quick here. Da, 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 da. It says this here. Okay, yep. Oh, yeah. oh, I just want to look this. Right here. Okay, Genesis. Oh, where to go? Well, I'm, uh, yeah, okay. So the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This is the last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Do you see that? So how is it if she's from him in that way that she doesn't bear the image of God? She's directly from him. That's where her name even comes from, right? So what are you, what are you talking about there? And look at this next verse. This is going to go against their doctrine of polygamy. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother. Notice it's only one father and it's only one mother. And notice it is a father and a mother. And hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. You leave your father and mother, one mother, and you hold fast to your wife. You're not holding fast to your wife if you have a second and third wife. Now, they'll try to say, oh, well, each individual contract is different. It's just between you and that woman, so you are fulfilling it with that woman. As if polygyny, which is a form of polygamy, is not a disruption of the marital bond. It certainly is. And that next verse even would let you know that they shall become one flesh. He's becoming one flesh with all these different people? Do you see? Because they also teach polygamy. Okay, so well, I just had to take a little Bible break there. And now let's go to this next clip. We've played six so far. This is from Charles Dow, Straightway Truth Ministry. His interview with Jason Whitlock of Fearless. And listen to what Robert Mathis, former Indianapolis Colts player, says about how he ended up in the Hebrew Israelite spectrum of belief. Notice, and he sounds very sincere, but it's a search for personal identity. Ladies and gentlemen, finding yourself is what the hippies were trying to do, right? The existentialists, it's not about us finding ourselves. It's about us being found by God. But the beauty is when you get to know God and when he reveals himself to you, guess what? You know yourself. It starts vertical, then goes horizontal. But listen to this. Very fascinating. In black people coming to right, America. Right, right. So I'm trying to find out exactly who I am, <laughs> trying to seek truth, uh, going to Jehovah's Witness, uh, looking into commit, uh, just trying to find something because I had an overwhelming urge to find out the truth because I wasn't getting anything the route I was going that I grew up mm -hmm. in. But anyway, I come across straightway Pastor Dow. And what year? This was... So, um... Maybe the places of the churches he came up in weren't that great. I don't know. You know, I wasn't there. We weren't. There. I don't know. But notice how these folks never turn to Hebrew Islamism and say, OK, I found my thing. It's always got a result in also. And the Christian church is the worst thing of all time. You know what I mean? It's also involves a steady dose of church bashing as well. You know, and so here we see him talking about Kemet. Isn't it interesting, these alternative urban spiritualities that we deal with? You know, Dinu does a great job. we got a lot of people who do a great job in regards to dealing with Kemet. That's, you know, this pseudo-Egyptian spirituality. Very fascinating, right? And there you see him saying, you looked into that. This is something that tells you a different set of ideas and beliefs about your identity, but it's really focusing on your identity. You know, uh, having more melanin is a superpower, and it goes on and on and on and on. Sheldon Johnson, is that, brother, is that you from Cherry's, from Cherry's joint, from, is that, is that you, brother? Either way, shout out to Sheldon Johnson. MD has a good comment and says, 
Straightway teaches Yahweh as a polygamist with two wives. And by the way, that's true. I put a video up on TikTok where he literally says that, and he goes like this. And so is Christ as he marries the church. This and the multiple examples in the Old Testament are used to submit polyg polygyny within their congregation. That is some of the ways they do it. Um, uh, he's very correct, and uh, I'm glad that someone's, uh, you know, keeping track of them and knowing what's going on. Uh, so let's go to clip number eight here. And so far, it's mainly been Robert Mathis because he's the one who initially, initially reached out to Jason Whitlock. But we're going to get more and more into Dow, and he's going to talk about, about the Sports Illustrated article and all these unfounded allegations. I don't know where they're from. Let's see what he says here in regards to the Sports Illustrated Sales. article. So these allegations are unfounded, unwarranted. Uh, what I have found out over the years is that when it's something that people don't understand, it's easier for them to criticize it and to mock it because it's not what they're familiar with, rather than to actually look in it for itself. And so a lot of people have never even really truly looked into what straightway is all about. Um, anytime, I mean, Jesus told us clearly, you will be hated of all men for my namesake. I've done nothing to nobody. I'm not hated because I've actually have done something to somebody. I'm hated because of my level of obedience to the word. Do people turn over their fire? This guy, I mean, I haven't done nothing to nobody. I'm hated because of my level of obedience to the word. Well, listen, Pastor Charles Dow, I don't hate you, first of all. You know, I strongly disagree with you. And, uh, you know, I have looked into what you teach. You know, you say, oh, people are afraid. They're afraid, so they, they criticize stuff they're I've read your book. I've went through various iterations of your website. Mm, I listened to hours of your interviews and your teaching. Um, I haven't got all the stuff you teach figured out because some stuff is a little hidden beneath the surface. But I'm learning, you know. For example, I know that you're one of the few Hebrews like groups who practices water baptism, you know. I know that. I know that you're one of the few groups that's uh, explicitly modalist. So at least in a, a way, you're sort of affirming the deity of, of, of the Father and the Spirit, although it's, it's done with modalistic monarchianism. And, you know, okay, okay, okay. Uh, but it's because I have looked into what you teach, man. And they'll say unfounded allegations. What's the example of the unfounded allegation? You know, they'll say people are lying about them. I, I don't believe you've ever showed that I lied about anything that you teach or what you are. If I made a mistake, let me know. Let me. I need to hear this clip one more time. Themselves. So these allegations are unfounded, unwarranted. Uh, what I have found out over the years is that when it's something that people don't understand, it's easier for them to criticize it and to mock it because it's not what they're familiar with, rather than to actually look in it for itself. And so a lot of people have never even really truly looked into what straightway is all about. So I have and I am, you know, uh, and I don't hate anyone over there. In fact, if you remember, a, one of your members asked if I could come to the campus in Lafayette, Tennessee. They uh, promised that I would be safe and treated with respect. <laughs> and I said, okay. I said, but I bet you Pastor Dow's not going to go for it. The person called Pastor Dow and a few minutes later called me back and said, yeah, he, he said you can't. It's not a good, it's not, it's not okay. It's not a good idea. Okay. I'm not going to storm the place. You know what I mean? I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to do that. But, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not afraid. I would come talk to you, you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, yeah, I would come s see your place or whatever. But uh, okay, doesn't have to be hate. It just we disagree. Um, anytime, I mean, Jesus told us clearly, you will be hated of all men for my namesake. I've done nothing to nobody. I'm not hated because I've actually have done something. There are accusations that you have done something to somebody. Now, uh, it seems like. You may be going down the route of Joseph Smith. Now, I don't mean with, you know, 40, like Brigham Young, or 30, or whatever uh, amount of wives in the polygamous situation, but Joseph Smith did some messed up stuff in relationship to marriages. Um, now, th the, there's some truth about some of the situations that still remains to be seen. Um I don't know, man. 
I would love to hear it be cleared up. I feel like it has not been cleared up. But if that's the case, you are, I have done something to somebody. That's not the only example, but you know what I'm talking about. Let's check out the next one. Let's to this. somebody. I'm hated because of my level of obedience to the word. The level Do of obedience people to turn the over word. their fine. My goodness. I mean, like, like, can't anybody have a legitimate disagreement with you? Or is it just because of your level of obedience to the word? I mean, like, that's it. And listen to this next part. I'm glad he asked this question. Because of my level of obedience to the word. Do people turn over their finances to you and the church? <laughs> now, that should be a yes or no question, I think. And I'm glad Whitlock asked that question. Right? And the answer is, yeah, they have a communal pot. And he's in charge. I mean, who else is in charge? He says the weirdest thing. He says, I don't have any finances. What do you mean you don't have any finances? Everyone has finances. I don't know. It's, it's such a strange answer. I don't have any finances. Listen to this. Do people turn over their finances to you and the church? Actually, uh, I don't own anything. I don't have any finances at, at all. Um, we have. You don't own anything? Does anyone in a straight way own something? Like who owns your shirt? Who owns your, you know, AR-15s? What do you mean? I, I just, I don't understand this. Just at, at all. Um, we have uh, an assembly and it all goes into one pot, every single bit of it. Um, and you, we get this from Acts chapter two. Definitely, I've certainly, well, that's the one thing that Sports Illustrated I thought got right. Mm -hmm. They compared y'all to Acts mm -hmm. and that is a unique. <sighs> they compared me all to Acts and got that right. Okay, well, look, if you know you uh, want to live that way, uh, then I think uh, Christians can be allowed to do that. I know of a, a group down in Cincinnati, Ohio, you know, from Columbus, Ohio, and uh, they do some of the communal living type stuff. Some of the Jesus people back in the late 60s, uh, 70s, like at Height Ashbury there in San Francisco, you know, the hippies who got saved, they did some of that similar stuff in the beginning. They're almost always become problems, and it's never long-term sustainable. Um, and it 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 is never said that it's how we're ha that we have to operate. Uh, you see it for a short time too. It's not even permanent, you know. Then you see Paul going around. You know, he has a job. He's a tent maker. You know, he's not he's not doing that anymore. For example, you see people selling property, and then Peter says, "It was yours, wasn't it? Yours? It was your property. How is it their property then if they're selling it and then donating it?" But it, Peter says, "Well, it's yours, man." So I, if they want to do things that way and people willingly do it, then okay. You know what I mean? Like, if you agree to that and that's what you agree to, you're allowed to do that. I think people should be allowed to do that in America. But I don't feel like his answer was very straight. And I definitely uh, do not think we should look to Acts to say this is normative, what we always have to do. Um, it's interesting because they'll take some things from the Old Covenant, right? Israel clearly didn't do that. Now, there's communal elements to the society, no doubt about that. Uh, people support the the Levites, the priests, right? They 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 support them, right? Uh, for example, there's a communal element where the whole society is supposed to support these folks. That's just one example. Later on, with the kings, there's communal elements to every society like that. There's a balance between individual community, right, 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 right. Um, but here they go to Acts and take this one place that is clearly describing something, but is not this command of how we're supposed to live. And, you know, you always got to wonder when people start doing that. Like I said, if people want to willingly enter into those, I don't have any problem with that. And it's not the worst problem uh, with this group per se. Um, and it, and I, 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 um, I do wonder if every straightway house church that they have all over the country, is their long-term goal for everyone to go find land in a rural area and begin their own commune? I think that's the way they're doing it. I think the idea is you start out with a couple, then once you get to a certain amount, you start looking for land, you pull your money together. And again, I'm not hating on that per se, but I think that's part of the long-term goal of this. There's a survivalist prepper element to straightway that's much stronger than it is in some of the Hebrew Israelite groups. Uh, but to their credit, they don't just talk about it. They do it. A lot of these other groups talk about it, and I don't see any action. Maybe one exception is Zadok's folks out there in Buffalo. Shout out to Buffalo, where the Polinos are from. Uh, maybe they're kind of doing that, but I don't know to what extent it's true there. I know they're trying to like maybe do some gardening and stuff. And, you know, if, if that's what they want to do, okay. Um, I'm not against unplugging from the matrix, so to speak. But I don't feel like the answer was very straight is all I'm trying to get at. Let me let me not keep on 
uh, going on about that. But shout out to the live chat. Thanks for sticking with me as we do this review of Pastor Charles Dow on Jason Whitlock's Fearless program. You know what's coming next. What do we got to come next to? We got to talk about the holidays. That's a big part of Dow's thing. Uh, my first feast was Passover 2019. And because I wanted to stop lying to my children, I have four with the, with the, with the holidays, the, the Christmas, the birthday, all, you know, the big four. It was a problem. Well, massive, it was a massive problem. And needless to say, uh, I took this walk by myself. So I'm no longer with her. So I'm following Pastor Dow as he follows Christ. Robert. The last part, wasn't that a little disturbing? Did anyone else catch that? I. It's like, yo, if you're being accused of being a cult, maybe tell people don't say stuff like that. I took this walk by myself. So I'm no longer with her. So I'm following Pastor Dow as he follows Christ. Mm -hmm. Robert. Is he following Christ, though? I literally saw a video today where he's officiating a wedding from his folks. And um, during the wedding ceremony, he says, we're doing such and such here in this Hebrews like community, unlike this wicked ass world. <laughs> and I just stopped to think because I just went to a wedding Saturday. Shout out to Jasmine. Uh, <laughs> Jasmine Cruz, now Manjares and Aaron Manjares. Shout out to the newlyweds. And I'm just thinking, what if the pastor, you know, was up there <laughs> and said, this couple is a good godly couple. They're not like this wicked ass world. <laughs> and then Pastor Dow says, not like this wicked ass world where the women have been turned more than a doorknob. <laughs> what? At the wedding. It's supposed to be like this sacred time. And he's sitting there saying it. I got the clip on my phone, man. If we have time at the end of the show, I'll play it. I Maybe I, now it makes me want to play it, you know, because because I hey I don't I don't be lying, man. Let me let me just show you, let me just show you this real quick. I'm just gonna go ahead and show y'all this. All right, let me let me show you this. You, you guys want to see it, right? You want to see the the clip I'm talking about, don't you? You know, it's the will of the Father and the Father's will that this would be the only man that she would ever know. <laughs> The way of the old paths is, can only be restored by us who are keeping his commandments. This should be taught in every house, every home. When y'all have seed, have children, you should teach them the same way. Every woman should aspire to be in this position right here, to be covered, to be um, a virgin, holy, virtuous, and true. Amen. Unlike this wicked-ass world where women are turned more times in a doorknob and used up and abused and their value plummets. To raise your seed, your children, children, and teach. Imagine me at a wedding. And that's part of this. It's like a sacred moment. I like this wicked ass world where women turn more than the <laughs> What? For this? Anyways, though, you hear the the holiday thing being brought up. Let me encourage you to to grab a book here. It's called The War on Christmas by Bodie Hodge. She's with Answers in Genesis. And uh, the whole thing's not about this, but it has a section. Is it a bunch of pagan symbols or traditions Christianized for the celebration? And the book gets a little bit into that. And there's some helpful stuff here. Battles in faith, tradition, and religious expression. Uh, Bodie Hodge is the general editor. Anyways, there's more on that. You guys know the IP, Inspiring Philosophy. There's a lot of good stuff in relationship to that, right? Don't you think? You've seen his, his stuff, and I think that he um, does some great stuff with that. And then there's also, you know, you go to the Answers in Genesis website, and they have a few resources on this. In fact, you can buy back uh, issues of their magazine. And then they have one called Happy Holidays, How Do We Get to This? And it's pretty good. You know, it's about the commercialization and secularization of the holidays and they talk about them and have little brief things in there and then also the star of bethlehem a supernatural sign in the heavens written from an astronomer's perspective so that's the 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 magazine i'd encourage you to check out too so you know just dropping some resources but these guys act like we um worship pagan gods on these pagan days and it's the cornerstone of christianity listen uh the holidays are not the cornerstone of christianity that what a weird thing to say they're not in the Bible. They're cultural expressions of faith for the Christian if they do them that way. The culture can do whatever, but that doesn't mean that's how we have to do them. 
right? What do I do? I celebrate the incarnation. What do I do on October 31st? I celebrate Reformation. What do I do when the Easter rolls around? I say Happy Resurrection Sunday. I'm not just saying that's it, but I'm just saying, y'all, like, that's not how we're supposed to be doing it. If you're a believer, I hope you're not doing it that way. Now, are you supposed to? Do you have to? No, you don't have to, you, you know? Let me, uh, thank you, Nate. Nate's dropping all the links today, brother. Uh, I'm going to Go ahead and replace that one because you just dropped that. Uh, you probably did it through uh, the Smile account that we have on Amazon, which I always forget to tell people about. But, you know, I think it's important because they make a big deal out of this. And, you know, if you esteem one day as more important than the other, then okay. And if you don't, then okay. Why do they get so uptight about this when we're not really that uptight about it? Now, it's kind of sad here, this next clip, because you just heard Robert Mathis and uh, say that it, he had to take the journey without his wife. But then it's weird because earlier in the question, uh, the conversation, he says, are you married? And he says, yes. Now, I'm going to explain that in a second here. It's kind of sad. Her demands by not listening to straightway. Robert, are you married? Yes. Did you know your wife before you were involved with straightway? Yes, sir. Any issues? Any or. So, you know, it's hard uh, to be uh, discussing this. Uh on a national platform with the with the situation because a lot of people get into straight way and their marriages break apart. Um, the women often feel like Dow's coming in between them, basically. And uh, that happened with Mathis. But it's interesting because notice earlier he said uh, he wasn't with his wife. But here – now, I don't think he's lying. I think he's expressing the theology of the group because I've talked to Kabir, and Kabir will say you're married unless you've released your wife on a biblical basis. She can't divorce you, biblically speaking. She's still yours. I think that's what he's expressing here. So the idea is, are you married? Yes, you are married, would be their understanding. And I, I you know, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm hearing what he's saying there. But that's where the contradiction is. Uh, I don't think he's lying. And, you know, it's a painful thing because right before that, Kabir was saying the same thing about what happened with him and his wife. He lost his wife as well in this situation. And so did the guy in the last clip we're going to play. That's a painful thing. I, f I feel for these brothers. You know what I mean? Um, and I don't know all the individual situations or what should be done. Um, but I'm just trying to help you understand that this is kind of a frequent thing, it appears, with Straightway, where, um, you know, dudes like this guy because they're like, hey, you can have a bunch of wives and, you know, your woman's not made of them to God, right? And the women's like, I don't like this guy. And things fall apart. Next clip, here we go, clip 12. Talked about this last week, but I said I won't say his name, but I, I think he's perfectly fine. There's a kid that played football. And the reason I'm playing this is Whitlock knows he wears lights in his life on a personal level. I would like to get on Whitlock and give the other side to this. And, uh, you know, this should show you how Hebrewism is all over pro sports, especially it appears in football for whatever reason. Now, I have some reasons why I think that is. I've talked about it. Just look up NFL or football on my channel and you'll see what I'm saying. But listen to this. It's interesting, isn't it? Ball State in 2007, 2000, a great football player, Dante Love. He was going to be a wide receiver in the NFL. This was, this was an undefeated Ball State team that was nationally ranked. He breaks his neck against Indiana University. I get involved in his life. He's like my adopted son. He's been telling me about the Israelite thing for the last five years. Wow. And uh, we've gone back and forth, and, and, you know, I got my views, he's got his, but uh, he's got his woman on board. And uh, yeah. they, they got two kids, and, and I got to give this young dude. Yo, shout out to Brian Babes in the live chat. Everyone subscribe to her. Brian Babes, drop your link, or maybe one of the mods can. You know what I mean? And Jonathan Hawkins, is that you? Are you the, the gentleman who's with um, Pastor Omar. I can't remember. If, if, if it's not, please excuse me. Am I bad if, if that's not you? Um, but was that you that was? I'm not sure there. But there he talks about a, a friend, you know, a guy that he mentors who's into Hebrew Islamism. So, you know, it makes sense why he's covering this. Now, here comes the next thing we've already discussed a little bit, polygamy, which they're going to make sure you say is polygyny. Listen to this. But these people are coming up with this stuff. I have no idea, but it's not true. Do y'all believe in polygamy? I do, but it's not polygamy. It's called polygyny. The world does polygamy. Um, a lot of people, they, um, they, I don't, I don't, I, the Bible doesn't speak about a man and a woman and a man, or a man and man, or a woman and woman. Uh, it does speak 
clearly that Abraham, the father of the faith, uh, he had wives and concubines. Um, Jacob had four wives, out of which come the twelve tribes of Israel. Moses, the custodian of the law, had three wives. Um, David, the king of Israel, had eighteen between wives and concubines. Of course, we all know about Solomon. Um, and but it's it's not. It's, it actually has laws written in the Torah, written in the law of Yah, that actually um, regulates and sanctions a man having more than one wife if he chooses to. Okay, it's interesting, that clip right there, um, Whitlock's people on Fearless actually turned into a short. So if you go to Fearless, the YouTube channel, which has a ton of subscribers, so how, tell me somebody, some, tell, tell me somebody, somebody tell me how many subs uh, Whitlock's Fearless has. Actually, hold on, I've already got it up. What's wrong with me? I forgot I already brought it up. 212,000. 212,000. Uh, and, uh, there, if you look, this has got a few brothers who you might know, uh, here. I'm not going to say who's who or what's what right now. In fact, they're kind of cut off. So maybe it's for the best, but, uh, it's very interesting. Some of the folks are in the circle and here you see the kind of topics he's got, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. and then you see, and if you look through the shorts, what you're going to see, you're going to see a short where he actually has that um, listed out, and he's got one of his truth bombs. It's kind of like a highlight clip they do with the truth bomb. They do that for a lot of the episodes. It seems like they do one afterwards, and this truth bomb is 5 minutes and 49 seconds. It says, who are the real Israelites of the Bible? And the interview itself, seven days ago, 70,000 views, ex-NFL stars Robert Mathis and KGB Defend Israelites. One hour, 26 minutes, 50 seconds. Got the straightway logo up there with the bomb. I'm sure they love that. You know, you got the, like, the bomb joint with the straightway logo. Actually, you guys can't see it, can you? Well, let me, let me, let me try to fix this so you can see it. I'm sitting there talking about it. You guys can't even see what I'm saying. Sorry about that. There you go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they got Biden sniffing. <laughs> I, I think I'll never get tired of the Biden sniffing stuff. It's so funny. It's, what's wrong with our president? What's wrong, dude? Anyways, okay, the back over there. So um, you hear that. Now let's just look at one thing. Let's look at Matthew 19, 5. Matthew chapter 19, verse 5. Let's start at verse 1, though, okay? Now, when Jesus had finished these sayings, he went away from Galilee and entered the region of Judea beyond the Jordan, and large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. So I'm reading this in light of something that Pastor Charles Dow of Straightway Truth Ministries just said on Jason Whitlock's Fearless program on the Blaze Network. And on this interview, you had... Various people speaking, primarily Dow himself, the leader of a Hebrews like group in uh, Tennessee, as far as the HQ. They got over a dozen locations, though, throughout the continental United States. And then Robert Mathis, KGB of Green Bay. These are all ex NFL uh, players. And another guy who used to play for the Vikings answered as well. And one thing that Whitlock asked Dow was, Do you believe in polygamy? He said, No, we believe in polygyny, but polygyny is a form of polygamy. And it's as if they haven't read this verse. Now, in reality, I know they have because they have to have fabricated ways to get around it. But look at what Matthew 19 says in verse 3. And Pharisees came up to him and tested him by asking, is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? Now, when I talked to some people from straightway, they seemed to indicate to me that it was. He answered, have you not read? Now, I'll stop there real quick. Isn't it interesting you ever notice um, that when Jesus is interacting with Pharisees, he, he says to them, have you not read? But when he's talking to the crowds, he says, you've heard it said. Huh? Because the Pharisees are directly re reading the text, and Jesus holds them to that standard. So he says, have you not read? With the crowds, he says, you've heard it said, love your uh, friends and hate your enemies. But I say unto you, you've heard it said. Because they're mainly hearing it as it's taught. You see what I'm saying? Shout out to Bree and Babes. Like I said, drop your link in the in the in there and let's get some subscribers to your channel. And thank you for the super chat. She does great work over there. Shout out to that sister. And uh, maybe drop the link of the time I was over there or something like that. Anyways. Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? By the way, further evidence are both made in the image of God. Because you see, them made them male and female. And said, therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother. Again, notice the expectation is that it's one father, one mother. Uh, that, that speaks to the culture. And I believe does has implications for this whole polygamy question as well. And hold, but I know someone say, well, they've only got one mom and one dad. 
right? I'm going to say something like that. And hold fast to his wife. It doesn't say hold fast to his wives. The way they would say is, oh, yeah, hold fast to, uh, you know, one at a time, I guess, that particular wife. But it says hold fast to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. Just two. No more. Just two. And they become one flesh. Clearly, polygyny is a disruption of that. So Jesus is saying, have you read that? And this is a relationship to a question about divorce. Interesting. He goes back to Genesis, the foundation. Just like Ken Ham says, that's why we need to go back to Genesis for our answers. All right. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. I believe polygamy is a form of separation. Now, so, you know, it's not a divorce, but you guys, you guys see there's a further implication through this. They said to him, why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of a divorce and to send her away? So they're challenging him. They're saying, well, you're contradicting Moses right here. Then why did Moses command? Now, did Moses command or did Moses allow? But they say, why then did Moses command one to give a certificate of a divorce and to send her away? He said to them, because of your hardness of heart. Oh, this is interesting. This has got a function with how we look at certain Old Testament law straight up. Certain Old Testament law is there because of the hardness of man's heart. Jesus says so. These, uh, this easy divorce, basically, or versions of it, whatever it's, however it's done, is a version of it. The allowance, uh, in some instances, of polygyny, same thing. The allowance of slavery. I think we should look and understand it's not just this, but this is an example of a category. Because of your hardness of heart, that shows that some sin in the Old Testament is not abolished but regulated. I don't know any other way that I could look at this when I see this, because this is what Jesus Christ is saying. He's the rabbi I follow to understand the Old Covenant. He should be yours too if you're a Christian. Shout out to JP for the super chat. Thank you, every guy, everybody. You guys have been real faithful today. I really appreciate that, and I hope that because I've been really putting in a lot of work uh, for this show. You know, like the clips and everything. And I know we're not even going to be able to get everything and you know whatever, whatever, whatever. But here, let me uh, show you their uh, vocab on Berean Babe channel. Thanks again, Nate. You know, you're working hard today, bro. For real. I haven't even finished this. Come on now. Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. Someone's going to be like, oh, your wives. No, it's referring to all the people there. You know, it's not saying all of your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. So that's not the original intent in creation. And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality and marries another, commits adultery. So that's a high standard. Do you see that? That's the only reason. And notice it's not even commanded there. Christians, this is going to get practical for a second, but uh, we can practice forgiveness. Now, every situation is different, I understand, but I'm just saying it's not commanded, but it is allowed in that case. That's There's an exception clause. Now, I do believe you can make the argument that there are other exception clauses in the Bible when we take the whole systematic together. And Wayne Grudem just recently came out with a book or an article, I forget which one it is, about that. Maybe someone could type in um, uh, DuckDuckGo. Uh, Wayne Grudem, Divorce, something like that. And I think he uses the classic three phrase, uh, three categories. Shout out to the table for the super chat. Thank you very much. Of adultery, abuse, and abandonment. And I do agree with those categories being biblical. Adultery, abuse, and abandonment. Uh, because you see... 1 Corinthians 7 in regards to abandonment, and I think ab abuse actually would be in the same place. Anyways, so now continuing on here, but we at least see this one here, um, not commanded but allowed, and it's because of the hardness of the heart. The disciples said to him, if such is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. So they understood the hard teaching he was giving. But he said to them, not everyone can receive the saying, but only those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who have been so from birth, and there are eunuchs who have been made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who have made themselves eunuchs. For the sake of the kingdom of heaven, let the one who is able to receive this receive it. Say, so some of you may have the gift of singleness either forcibly upon you in some way, I don't think it only has to mean for the, the man to have his stuff cut off, although that's the most literal interpretation. I think maybe maybe you're in a situation where you just can't find anybody. There's no one available. It's not, it's not going to be godly for you to be married to any of these people. It's just not working out. 
it's almost like you're forced to be a eunuch by man, but you don't know how long that's going to last, do you? Because it's not permanent, like cutting off the genitalia. But maybe that's the case, and that would apply male, female. Now, I know I'm getting a little practical. Uh, I don't want to get too caught up on this. I'm so sorry. But I hope that's hopeful. That's, that I do think there's some practical application there. But look at that. That's teaching on marriage. There's other stuff we could say, but we got to keep it moving. They're going to have a problem with that because they, they've got all these defenses, pro polygamy going on. But they're just simply not correct, and we want to do what the Bible says, not what Pastor Dow says. But he is the Hebrews of light, and listen to this, and you'll see what he what I'm saying, because he clearly is. Watch this. Been bought over here in the slave ships, and then scattered throughout the Caribbean. We are the original Israelites that the Bible speaks about. So you agree with Bishop Nathaniel on that? I do. So you see that the whole impetus or catalyst for this interview was that Charles Dow and Robert Mathis and those with him, what happened? They disagree with IUIC. But on the big thing of who's a Hebrew Israelite, they agree. And that's why they're all Hebrew Israelites. Shout out to the table for the super chat as well. And I don't remember if I said it already, but JP. But shout out to both of y'all. And so that's why we gather, we group them together, because on that issue, they, they agree. And there he basically says, hey, our people, we're the real OG Israelites. You know, that's what he says. And here he gets into the whole ships and Deuteronomy thing as well. Classic Hebrew Israelites. It's right here. because, you know, he connected it to scriptures that said that we would be brought over in ships and all that. Mm -hmm. and that's your justification as well? Or and again, Well, also now, the, um, the, an Israelite today. An Israelite today is, is one that's, that's not born of the flesh, but of the spirit. Mm -hmm. One that is born again. Uh, and born again is by receiving the Holy Spirit. So I don't stop there. I started there to go up to this point. Because we as Yehudims are charged to not only be light. Say that again. Yehudims. What are that? That means well, those of us of the tribe of Judah. Judah. And Judah is just not one tribe. Judah consists of Judah, Benjamin, and Levite. Uh, they were the ones who actually who stayed in obedience with the Most High Yah, but the ten tribes that defected, um, they scattered up through the northern countries. And so there's a lot going on there to answer. What he's saying there is I start with Deuteronomy 28 in slave ships, but I don't end there because they, we're talking that that situation is just Judah. So notice in one sense, he'd be a black only Israelite as far as who, who's an actual Israelite. Now, not 100% because later on he's going to say something that's kind of different. But from that answer, you might get that. So don't – straightway, don't clip this or say I'm lying because I'm going to play the other clip as well. So I understand. But from that answer, you might think that's what's going on there because he's only got those groups. He doesn't have Native Americans and Hispanics like a 12 tribes chart. He says it's this group, this group, this group, the southern tribes. And usually he says, hey, it's black folks, right? But then he says – but now an Israelite is anybody who's basically born again and follows the law. I mean, it's a significant thing. Did you, do you guys hear that? Listen. Today, an Israelite today is, is one that's, that's not born of the flesh, but of the spirit. So, again, credit where credit is due. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian apologist. Part of what I do is polemics. That means, are you against the false ideas in Hebrew Israelism? But to his credit, Pastor Dow said, one who's born of the spirit. Thank you. It is so rare to hear a Hebrew Israelite even talk about the new birth or being born again. Now, it's actually, in a way, makes things more dangerous because Tao actually is closer to Christianity in some very real ways than a lot of the other Hebrew Israelites. When I say Christianity, I mean biblical doctrine. I don't mean some evangelical American complex or something. Get that out of your mind. That's not what I'm talking about when I say that, okay? I'm talking about global historical, right? fascinating so on one hand i applaud that answer we all should but then it's also more scary because it's closer but they add these other things in so when i say more scary i mean able to deceive someone who's a sincere born again christian perhaps easier with this listen to that that first part is right and it sounds a lot like what desmond ingram just said and by the way shout out to des he just did a killer presentation Maybe somebody should drop the link for that, too. It's Hitler presentation. I forget what city it was, and uh, everyone should watch his presentations on Hebrew Israelism. He did a great job. More so spiritual Israel, it sounds like. Yeah, it does sound like that. That's closer to what we teach, too, in regards to the New Covenant. You could be spiritual Israelite by being born again, the new birth. But hold up, let's watch this. Oh, now, the, um, the, an Israelite today, an Israelite today is, is one that's, that's not born of the flesh, but of the spirit, mm -hmm. one that is born again. 
uh, and born again is by receiving the Holy Spirit as well. So I don't stop there. I start. Now it's weird because he's got this category of Israelite, but then he's got this category of born again. One is emphasized in the New Testament as what you need to be. The other one's not anymore. So it's, it's a strange alchemy here. Shout out to Edwin Kelly. You know what's up. There to go up to this point because we as Yehudims are charged to not only be light. Say that again. Yehudims. He's saying we got to we got to teach the other nations. We got to teach the other people. Yehudim. What are that? That means well, those- right, we'll stop there with that clip. OK, do you guys want to do some more clips? I do got some more clips. I got some more clips. Let's play some more clips. This will be the 16th clip. This is 20 seconds long. And so an Israelite today, it, it would be very hard to say that Israelites today are only black people or melanated people. You can't do that. The only way you're going to be able to find out when someone is a true Israelite is, is if he gives them his Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And then they start keeping his commandments. That's when you really truly know what an Israelite is mm-hmm. today. Hallelujah. What? You sound like a Christian over here, bro. Was it? Was it? But then again, not really. Because, oh, you got to keep the law and do. Now, there's some, if, let's take a charitable interpretation of this. This is fascinating. Notice I said I was going to play another clip, so we weren't isolating that alone. All right, let's, let's see. And so, an Israelite today. You're... An Israelite today. Now, it's weird. If you're an Israelite, that's a category of being born uh, physically, but then he changes it also into something else where it's also category of something that's spiritual so if that's the case see, you see what i'm saying and people are like feeling what i'm saying here uh the, the the dude says uh the dude says no sir you have no charge over me no man has a charge over me only christ only christ only god has charged good sir man he is flip-flopping and true will says bait and switch cut Bait and switch, cut. cut. <laughs> That's right, man. That's right. I'll put those comments on the screen once they appear. I'm having my uh, my my uh, little things here, a little bit behind here. But now let's listen to this. It would be very hard to say that Israelites. It'd be very hard to say that. So he's got a little bit of sense. The thing is, though, he's talking a little bit different than he does in other places. This is the most clear I've ever heard him be in regards to this issue. They are only black people or melanated people. But then when I listen to Michael Israel interview on Spiritual Army or whatever, he sounds a lot more traditional in his Israelism, you know? can't do that. The only way you're going to be able to find out when someone is a true Israelite is, is if he gives them his Holy Spirit. Okay, that sounds spiritual. And then they start keeping his commandments. That's when you really truly know what an Israelite is. Mm-hmm. And they start keeping his commandments. So if it is to obtain merit in some way, no. But it is true that we will walk in sanctification and newness of life if we're born again. So we could try to give a charitable interpretation. The thing is, I don't think that's all he's saying. Tehran, classic one Wester says, Gentiles will be the Israelite servants in the new kingdom. Well, Tehran, which is a city in Iran, so I don't know why you're named that. Pastor Charles Dow, a Hebrew Israelite with a much larger congregation than you have, disagrees. Just saying. Hey, hallelujah. Who's right? Well, that was interesting. Uh, where did the hallelujah come there? Where did that? Ha- Who said hallelujah? All right. Well, hey, the table says bring the clip. So here is clip 17. Look how much work I did for you. See how I love you guys. <laughs> so anybody can be an Israelite. If they are born again of the water and of the spirit, been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's that Pentecostal element. I'm a charismatic in the sense of I'm a continuationist. So I believe that uh, sign gifts can be for today. They're not normative. They're not demanded or required. And the biggest miracle of all, of course, is the miracle of new birth. And uh, da 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 But that doesn't mean they're off the table because the perfect has not yet come. I believe the perfect, according to Scripture, is when Christ returns. And so that is still a reality. But uh, I'm very cautious about it. But baptism in the Holy Spirit from a Pentecostal perspective usually means you have some 
evidence, and it's not just sanctification, it'll be like uh, speaking in tongues, for example. Like with the Assemblies of God, 16 Fundamental Truths, the initial physical evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost is speaking in tongues, is what they would say. I do not believe that's right, because Paul says, are all going to speak in tongues? Are all going to prophesy? The answer is no, and he also says that the Spirit sovereignly distributes gifts how he wants to. 1 Corinthians 12-14 through 14 is a proper view of the gifts. Been filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, have met the conditions of the book and they're walking in the newness of life. They are Israelites. As a matter of fact, when you go over, we're all familiar with the story of Esther. Now, Pastor Dow is going to be on our side on this over and against the One Westers. So listen to Dow dropping a true truth bomb from the book of Esther. Are you ready? Transforming into a Christian apologist here. Watch this. He put it out that these, you know, that uh, they got to go ahead and fight against these people. But you know what it says over in Esther 8, 17? It says, and many people of the land became Jews. Mm -hmm. This is a pagan country that now the people, because of their fear of the Israelites, because of the way that the God of Israel protected them, they became Jews. That's what the book says. Also, uh, there's a man by the name of. The book of Esther does say that. Hebrew Israelites cannot properly deal with it. Um, I talked about this again on my interview with smart Christian, Corey, and I just interacted with this clip. And I'm going to drop it later on on my channel, so you'll see what I'm talking about. But I'm just saying, this is a place where we can tell one Westers, you know, I agree with Pastor Charles Dow here. <laughs> that people can become Jews. They'll literally be out on the corner and be like, can you become Chinese? <laughs> You know, could you speak spiritual Chinese? One time on Dallas, I told him, well, if Jesus was Chinese, I guess you could because with your union with Christ. But that's not the case, is it? He's, he's a Hebrew. Interesting, interesting, interesting stuff. He's actually right about that. And then he goes to the New Testament and he's also right about this next thing. Timothy, who had a father who was a Greek, but his mother was a Yehudi or a Jewish, which you would read in the book. Him is the one that Paul taught. Now, if you listen to a lot of these doctrines today, they would say based on the nationality of his father, he couldn't be an Israelite. But that's after the flesh. But that's after the flesh. He's actually right about this. And he's talking about one Westers, the ones who say that. All the one West groups that we know of off the top say that, except for the GOCC. They still have an ethnic hierarchy, which Dow does too, but it's much of a softer hierarchy, right? Listen to this. Listen to this clip. Uh, important here. A man by the name of Timothy, oh, who had a father who was a Greek, but his mother was a Yehudi mm -hmm. or a Jewish, which you would read in the book. Him is the one that Paul taught. Now, if you listen to a lot of these doctrines today, they would say based on the nationality of his father, he couldn't be an Israelite. But that's after the flesh. That's not after the spirit. Because now Paul took him, circumcised him, and then not only that, gave him instructions to ordain elders in every city. So Paul, them, they didn't, if, if, if the Greek man, his father, was a white man at that time, Paul didn't use that as a means to discriminate this man and his love for Yah, his love for Jesus. What? Now, first of all, it's a little weird to uh, automatically associate Greek with white. That's a modern category. But, I mean, I guess I basically get it. I mean, Greeks are kind of, you, you got like like a Mediterranean people. And some look more like stereotypical European. And some look more kind of Mediterranean, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, somewhat similar across Italy. You know, there's a massive difference between North and South. And especially with Sicily. Okay, okay, okay. Which is an island, not really part of the boot proper, right? Um, but here, okay, let's just accept what he's saying, though. Um, where's the lie? Paul did not use the fact that his father was a Greek as a basis to discriminate against him. In fact, wrote him these letters and then told him to go appoint elders. So that means you would have a man whose father was a Greek appointing elders, and he's the one going to be teaching them, not Paul. By the way, that goes against something I read in Dow's book, because in Dow's book he said, I strongly believe you got to be taught by an Israelite, basically. Well... Timothy may have been taught by an Israelite, if you want to use that terminology, a Benjamite specifically, Paul, especially his spiritual son of the faith, but Timothy's teaching people, and he's not an Israelite, according to his father. Now, the camps, what do they try to do? They get wacky. Well, it actually means his father was a uh, Hebrew. What? It says Greek multiple times. That's why he wasn't circumcised. Oh, yeah, but it means Hebrew. No, it doesn't. Cra crazy, dude. No, no, it doesn't. Stop. Dow's right this time, and those one Westers are wrong. 
Why? Because he's agreeing with the Bible in this instance. So we give credit where credit is due. Listen to this, though. Hmm. Living in exile to him until he comes back again. But this thing where people uh, are preaching a message that is not the gospel message, but they're preaching a message and they're getting a hold of the hurts and the disappointments and the pains that has happened to us over throughout the centuries and throughout the years. And that is what's drawing people in. That, that's, that's not the message. That's another message, another gospel, and another Messiah being preached to them because we were drawn because of his love for us, shedding his blood on the tree. Hold on, just, 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 first of all, he's accusing the campers of preaching another gospel. He's right about that. We've been saying that. He's talking about it's another Christ. It is. The One West Christ is not a Christ. You hear? And he says, playing into the hurts and stuff of people. True. Now, what's interesting, though, is when I hear him with Michael Israel, he says, oh, they try to act like we're just angry. What are the... Well, wait a minute. You were just saying that that's the attraction the One West is using. But then he's like saying, oh, that's not why we're in this. But I'm saying even he's rec – if you listen to the interview with Michael Israel, I really encourage everyone to listen to it because you hear the other side. You hear the less Paulish side. I'm not saying he's uh, like – Lying like that. That's not, I, you know, I don't automatically accuse, but he is showing two different sides of his face in a way with some of the shading, you know. But listen to this centuries and throughout the years, and that is what's drawing people in. That, that's, that's not the message. That's another message, another gospel, and another Messiah being preached to them because we were drawn because of his love for us. Amen. Shedding his blood on the tree. We agree. That's how we were drawn. He filled us with his Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. His spirits compelled us to keep his commandments. And now we're all walking in a newness of life. And it makes no difference if you're Jew or Greek, bond or free, male or female. For that sounds all... like the Bible. That sounds like Galatians 3.28, a verse which Hebrew Israelites of the One West variety hate. All one in Messiah. That's what the book says. It does say that in Ephesians 2. I think two. I agree with all that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. I can't find anything. I disagree with that. Uh, well, there's a lot of stuff to agree with. The thing is, uh, compels us to keep the law. What does he mean by that? That's where the real rub is. Their Hebrew roots element is where the problem comes in. But we're going to overpass that for now. We got a few more clips. Do you guys want to watch nine more clips together? They're all short. Notice I've really chopped these up into bite-sized pieces because I'm that nice. Well, I thought I had nine more, but 2021. Oh, yeah. Well, let's get into this. Listen to this, everybody coming out against him and saying that he is anti-Semitic and, and hey, all this stuff, and he never communicated that at all. It's, it's sad. It really, truly is sad what is going on today. It's like that. It's okay for a certain demographic of people to be able to speak. He's gonna talk about the Jewish people right here because all Hebrew Israelism is anti-Semitic in one form or another. Pretty much. Pretty much. Like that, it's okay for a certain demographic of people to be able to speak, who are now so-called called the untouchables, the Jews. But <laughs> didn't you watch the Chappelle skit, brah? <laughs> he, he pulled the Kanye. I'm not gonna say what kind of doctor it was, but <laughs> right, you see the clip. The untouchables. <laughs> he can't. He can't. He can't help but say. He can't help but say. Uh, they're talking about the Kyrie and the H2N stuff there. Able to speak, who are now so-called called the untouchables, the Jews. But when it's time for us to speak, now all of a sudden there's something wrong, even if we make a post. Hmm, poor Kyrie. Poor Kyrie. But that leads into the conversation about the Hebrews to Negroes book by Ron Dalton Jr. Listen to this. It's getting interesting. Hebrews the Negroes documentary. I know the man personally. I actually have had that book probably ever since it first came out. I know Ron Dalton Jr. Personally. He's had that book. <laughs> have you read the whole thing, though? I got to tell you, I started that book a long time ago. And I, since the Kyrie stuff, I revisited the book to go through it. Oh, my goodness. It takes forever to get through it. it, 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 it it's it, and It's one of three books that Ron Dalton put out. And it's not like it's just so fact-filled or something, like, oh, we can't handle it. The thing, um, 
I've got this, and I've also been not. A, I've also been going through an audible, and I still have twenty five hours left. Still, now some of it I've already got done. And I'm revisiting it, but my goodness, my goodness. All right, here we go. Listen to this. The man personally. I actually have had that book probably ever since it first came out. I know Ron. The book that the documentary is based upon. So Ron Dalton Jr. wrote the book, Hebrew, Stingy Grew, three, three different volumes. I got all three of them. And then he also, uh, you know, made the movie, the film that Kyrie retweeted. Listen to what he says here. Dalton Jr. personally, because in 2019, I was actually invited to go to Detroit, Michigan, where I actually received a Hebrew and Man of the Year award. <laughs> you remember when John Kerry was running for president? And the Republicans started making fun of John Kerry because he could not make a speech without saying, I served in Vietnam, you know, forgetting about the fact that he took his medals and threw them back over the fence or whatever, you know, uh, right? Uh, when he did the DNC, like, you know, accepted the nomination, reporting for duty or <laughs> right? Dow is John Kerry... With the Vietnam stuff, except not with the Vietnam stuff. With the I received the Hebrew of the Man of the Year award. You can't catch him talking about Ron Doughton Jr. without saying, I received the Hebrew Man of the Year award from him back in 2019. And if you want to see one of the funniest videos, bro, watch Dowell go with his squad up into that event in Detroit, that Great Awakening event, it is some of the funniest video footage you'll see. He's got this all-white joint on, and he's walking around like chewing gum with the headpiece on, like he's a head of state, and he's got these security guys who are looking both ways. Bro, it's so funny. <laughs> you have to watch it. It's like, bro, who are you right now? He, he's arriving at this event like he's the head of state. Like, I don't care who to be here. You know, I'm just here to receive my award. The thing is, people don't realize Ron Dalton Jr. does a trick with his, with his things, these Great Awakenings. He basically gives an award almost for everybody that shows up. Like, I looked at the PDF one year of the booklet. It's got everybody getting everybody for everything. I mean, I think I saw an award there for Hebrew graphic uh, graphic designer. Now, I'm not being partially facetious, but my point is when you look at it, you're like, bro, this dude's given, like, participation awards. You know what I mean? It's like most improved Hebrew, you know? I mean, <laughs> I mean seriously, it's a lot of awards. So people come, like, to get their awards. So this guy comes as, like, a head of state to this event in Detroit. <laughs> it's just like he cannot mention the name Ron Dalton Jr. without being John Kerry with it, you know? In 2019, I was actually invited to go to Detroit, Michigan, where I actually received a Hebrew and Man of the Year award. Um, and by Ron Dalton um, and his colleagues up there. So I know him personally. And the sole reason I was up there for that particular uh, meeting is because... For the sole reason I was up there... They actually wanted to hear some of the things that I'm saying to you today. Now, there's some truth to that, okay? I saw the panel, and on the panel, people were... Some of the people were interested in how they were building these self-sustaining communities. Oh, <laughs> doki doki pilot. <laughs> Most wives of <laughs> uh, and I, I won an award for best polygamist of the year. <laughs> he says, yes. so, yeah. uh, and then we give a award to the women and they receive awards for being the most submissive wife. <laughs> And then we we give awards out to our favorite wives of the year. You know, I had a competition of 22, but one happened to make it. Man, I'm just kidding. What am I? Okay, anyways. Listen to this. How can our people get? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Hebrews are like, who has the most people lick his boots? And this year we want to acknowledge Captain Shamayaya, who had the most Edomites lick his boots. He set the record four in one day, ladies and gentlemen. He he hit for the cycle. He had. <laughs> oh man, okay. Hey, Dow even disses his homeboys though. Listen. Just wait. You'll see. I'm going to play these Negroes, clips. The Negroes documentary, I know the man personally. I actually have had that book probably ever since it first came out. I know Ron Dalton Jr. personally because in 2019, I was actually invited to go to Detroit, Michigan. Where I actually Listen to this. Put it down. He hasn't taken it down. As a matter of fact, as soon as the book starts selling, they up the price. The wives get a group award. Hey, so check this out. Check this out right here. Um, <laughs> This dude is going to... He's going to say the documentary is boring. 
Now he's talking about how it's on Amazon, and he's gonna and he and, and he, he you know it's funny. He talks about Ron Dalton, Ron, Ron Dalton Jr. to big up himself. I won the Hebrew Award, the year award. but then he's gonna diss his book. Listen, he doesn't put it out. He hasn't taken it out. As a matter of fact, as soon as the book starts selling, they up the price, and nobody is saying nothing about Jeff Bezos. Did you watch the documentary? I have. You went there live. I can only make it through about an hour and 15 minutes. It is extremely boring. It is, it is extremely boring, and it's, you've got to have some You've got to want to. You, you've got to. It's, pain, it's, it's painful. And so is the book the same way? The book is mostly filled with history, but it's pretty much synonymous. But it's, it's not a boring <laughs> read because all you're going to It's painful. It's painful. I won the Hebrew uh, Man of the Year award from him, but uh, his book is boring as hell. I tell you, you gotta. I, 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 I had trouble sleeping. You know what I did is see. I, I just read this book for uh, one one sentence or two, and I just fall straight to sleep. So I actually like it because it's basically a chloroform in print, and, I, and that's something I need because I got a sleep apnea. See, and I just go straight to sleep because uh, this book is is boring and it is very painful. To, it's very painful. It's literally very painful. <laughs> I can only make it through about an hour and fifteen minutes. It's extremely boring. It is. It is extremely boring, and it's you've got to have. You've got to want to. You, you've got to. It's, pain, it's, it's painful. And so, is the book the same way? <laughs> he looks like The he's, book is mostly filled with history, like but it's pretty much synonymous. But it's, 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 it's not, not a boring wanted. read. Because all you're going to So the book's not boring, but the It's not is. a boring read. Because all you're going to do is read history of what the scripture says. But nowhere in that documentary or in the book have I ever heard or seen it, what they call anti-Semitic. See, the problem today, Jason, is this. Is that Israel is waking up. We know who we are now. And now we're able to wake up the nations and know who they are and bring them out from under the deception that has been crammed down our throats all these centuries. And because we are waking up, the first thing they want to do is try, just like the enemy does, stamp out all residue and resistance. They don't want the truth actually getting out here. They don't want people to actually truly know what's really truly going on. Let's just listen to these other clips real quick. I got to get not asked me for an interview. Now, I did. I think it was Okay, by one. the way, that's not true. Sports Illustrated did ask him for an interview. I, I got to do this again. I got to. I got to leave. Uh, so I got. We got to shut this down. But it's not true. Sports Illustrated reached out to him multiple times. I actually contacted. I had. I read about it and heard about it. But I recontacted the author of the Sports Illustrated articles and confirmed it again as well. So I don't know why he's saying that. And then he's gonna talk about Buffy Gorilla. Buffy Gorilla is a real lady's name. And uh, she runs a podcast for Sports Illustrated. They got a multi-part podcast coming out out on Straightway from SI. It's going to be dropping in February. And they contacted him as well. But notice how they, they make fun of her from her name. You know, these guys are really mature. But listen. And they have not asked me for an interview. Yeah, now, did. I did. I think it was this one woman named Buffy Gorilla or something like that. Now, I think she, um, that is her actual name, yeah, yeah. Buffy Gorilla. Uh, she, I think she tried to I'd get like to see her in contact. With her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's a sight to see. <laughs> well, uh, I'm gonna reserve comment. <laughs> he didn't reserve comment on his uh, his YouTube channel, though. But actually, um, uh, you know, <clears throat> journalism today is is going the way of religion. Who is they? The Zone. It's Sports Illustrated. They're doing a multi part podcast dropping on uh, February. They interviewed me for like three or four hours on that joint. Uh, it's funny, uh, later on, he says that Jason Whitlock is the best journalist that he's ever met. Now, listen, here's just where he gets into factual error. Uh, Constantine's the fourth century, not the, the third history century. Of listen to this. It actually started in the, in the third century by the Roman Emperor Constantine. But prior to oh, that, I heard someone say fourth underneath their breath. Did you hear that? Someone knows what's up. Listen. Can't do it. When you look at the history of Christianity, it actually started in the, in the third century. By the Roman Emperor Constantine. Someone said for that, how under it actually their came into being is was all of these, said that? these northern countries like the Vikings, the right, Wessex, Whitlock. the the Scandinavians, um, the Saxons, and, and all of these people, when they were raiding England and all this, they, they ended up merging with England and they end up becoming the Church of England. Um, and the Church of England uh, got its start because of the Roman Catholic Church. The Romans were actually one time militarily a great empire. They went from being a great empire to religious. And that's where the Roman Catholic Church comes. So now the Roman Catholic Church is the big grand poobah of Christianity. And so if you are obeying what Christianity says, such as um, obeying the sun worship of Sunday, if you are celebrating their holidays, uh, Christmas, Easter, Sunday, and all this, well, if you're going to be obedient to Yah, he has instructions. For All right. 
Uh, just a lot of mistakes there, but here's some books. Early Christian, uh, The History of Christian Doctrines by Lewis Burkhoff. Get that. Encyclopedia of uh, Early Christianity, second edition. Uh, that's a multi-volume set as well. Get that. Uh, early Christian Doctrines, J&D Kelly. It's a classic. Documents in Early Christian Thought. Definitely get that. Read that in seminary. Ecclesiastical History by Eusebius, and you'll know the truth of what he's saying a lot there is not the truth. But man, I got to play these last couple ones and get out of here. I really wish I could cover that. I just want to get through all of these. Um, you know, I don't have time to. I have three more clips, and we're going to have to pick this up at another time, but they're very interesting. They're of a different nature. But let me just say this. Love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Uh, I hope this was helpful. It's interacting with some of this and also exposing it for what it is and uh, agreeing where we can agree. And this thing's not going to go away. 2023 is going to be a very interesting year because Hebrewism is not going to disappear from the media and it's not going to disappear from the news cycle. I do not believe. And so we're going to have a very interesting year ahead of us. And so thank you for standing strong with us. Merry Christmas, everybody. Without peace out, God bless. Shalom. Let's do this again sometime soon. All right. How many roads? Too many signs. I can't read them. Wouldn't recognize a turn even if I seen it. Been driving all along.